the decision of the government at that time was to begin lectures immediately using a secondary school that was initially located on the southwestern side of the campus. I'm sure we can have time to see it. Now, following this, it was agreed that immediately construction of new buildings should start. The idea was so that we don't create an infrastructure deficit. So the first phase of the development was on that side, from 2005 to 2009 or 10, overlapping with the second phase that has this chain of buildings lined up from the former mortuary and to the vice chancellor. This office you see used to be the old Guinness Eye Center and it was fully converted by 2012 and fully furnished to a standard office of a vice chancellor. If I have your permission, we shall take off from this point and then see other buildings. By the way, right from the gate to this place, these projects were fully completed by the state government. Of course, we have intervention projects and I'm sure you will see them along the line as we conduct the tour. If I have your permission of the rise in the number of students coming into the university, there was need to construct a second phase of the science faculty. So this complex you see on the right with the green inscription of Ted Fund was built specially to take care of microbiology and biochemistry. And the building is completed and also the postgraduate training of those departments. So at any moment from now, those departments will move and take over the buildings, but they have been fully completed. And like I said, each one was costing 115 million naira. On this side and two inside, the project is nearing completion, as you can see the contractors outside. Yes, this is Ted Fund. Yes, we can see, the third. these are two and these are two. Million. At earlier visited Kafanchang, and um, we are now in the main campus. Uh, we are happy to be here. Also, knowing the age of this university, 2004. Uh, so, we can see this is a relatively very new university, taking off on a temporary site uh, with a lot of uh, uh, secondary school infrastructure now undergoing some level of transformation. Uh, so, we are pleased uh, with the investment by various state governments in the north university. Virtually every state in the north now has a university. Uh, this was never the case before this democracy. Uh, before this democracy, all the state universities were virtually in the south, except maybe Benway State, uh, except maybe, B even Benway, I think is, uh, no, except Benway State. Um, virtually all state universities were south-based. Now every state in the north has a university under the last 13, 14 years of democracy, which is really an advance. So cumulatively, you can say that uh, democracy has done much more for higher education in the north than what the case was for uh, uh, under military rule. Uh, these investments are very important for the development of the north. The north is behind uh, in terms of education. And so we need to invest even more and more money uh, in ensuring that we build our educational system from primary, secondary school to university. Uh, here at the lot in terms of intervention projects, uh, trying to you know modernize an old campus. But I would like to advise that um, you need to plan this campus. I know it was an old campus, but you need uh, a lot of space also between buildings. You need also to plant a lot of trees and uh, you need to create an infrastructure that will give the campus some beauty. Uh, because the university, as you know, is uh, a, a universal community. So when people come into the university in future, they would like to see some planning, they would like to see some aesthetics, they would like to see that every new structure you build, don't rush them. You know, because um, I foresee that in future, you may want to, you know, um, again, rebuild some of the infrastructure. I know money is not coming in easily, but what I've seen is that you're also in a haste to expand. And uh, this is the problem. Once we start, we want to expand, we want to expand, we want to expand. So that compels you to be, you know, putting in whatever structure that resources could allow. I would suggest that in the, for, for the expansion I've seen between 2004 now, is high growth. I know a lot of people want to come in, 
it's always important to make sure that you do not allow expansion to go ahead of facilities. Because once you do that, so that you do not clog <coughs> campus with too many buildings. So if you have land for expansion, then modernization will gradually take place. Okay, you know if will, not, yeah. then you can retrench more campuses to the satellite investments already coming in uh, to build this university. Let me also uh, emphasize the kind of intervention the federal government has done here. Uh, if you see many of the structures here, belong to third fund and the third fund signature is in every higher institution in Nigeria owned by the federal state government. There is no one in go, whether it's a college of education or a polytechnic or a university. There you do not have third fund money going in to build very, very you know strong infrastructure for academic development. Uh, third fund is also training a lot of scholars and believe that this may be benefiting from those going on scholarship. You know, because we also uh, over 7,000 uh, uh, people have benefited so far going on scholarship abroad and in Nigeria. Most of them PhDs, only very few master's degrees. So I believe that the intervention by that fund is keeping a number of institutions going. I'm mentioning this because in recent times, your colleagues have closed the universities and uh, they are not working under the uh, demand that uh, the federal government should invest more funds uh, in, 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 the, in the universities. We agree. We have no disagreement with ASU when it comes to putting in more investment in the universities. But what we want ASU to acknowledge, uh, which is true, is that the university system has not seen the kind of growth in infrastructure that are coming in now in the last 20 years like we are seeing today. And this money that we have gone all around, the money comes from debt fund, the money comes from petroleum technology fund, it's coming from NNDC in the oil producing states, it's coming from Central Bank of Nigeria, it's coming from Universal Service Provision Fund in the NCC, and it's coming also from direct federal budgetary allocations. When you put these funds together, you know, you see that you know, billions and billions of Naira are going to development of infrastructure in our universities. So we, we believe that um, leadership is about structuring intervention to apply funds such that you will have synergy and impact in the entire society. It's not about carrying money to put in one sector while other ones stop working. If you do that, even the universities will be affected because you need water to keep this university going. You need roads to keep this university going. You need electricity to keep this university going. So if the federal government were to say, look, we have so many problems in the university, let's spend all the... Once again, appeal to our brothers and sisters in us. This strike has outlived its usefulness. It is now harming the university system. A strike is supposed to be um, an, act, an act to call government attention to additional uh, uh, investment in the university. And as far as the federal government is concerned, Continue. we have already given that attention. We negotiated at one level, headed by Benue State Governor. As we said, no, they will negotiate directly with the Vice President. The VP then sat in with them over days, almost a week. Another negotiation. He said no, they needed the president to intervene. The president sat with them overnight, you know, over 12 hours of negotiation, and we agreed on all the issues. What we'll be able to do with our problems. You know, if all other people are closed, I'm sure some members will not be comfortable in their houses now. Everybody says, look, we have a problem in our sector, we will not work until government solve all the problems. Then maybe life will no longer be come. Water may not come. Light will not come. You know? So please let us take it easy. Uh, so that we can all, uh, you know, restart our universities. We appreciate ASU, we appreciate their patriotism and their commitment.